Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the presentation on advanced CCK views by myself, Doug Van. Check me out at dougvan.com for all your training and development needs. I'm available. Um, rocking it here on the sunny day, Sunday in Triple Camp LA 2010. And we have, uh, we have to get down to business. We just killed 19 minutes getting our projector working because I blew it out. I blew out the other one. So thanks for bearing with me. Today I'm doing pretty much a case study on Leonard.com and some of the wacky, awesome, advanced CCK views I had to use to get the job done. Um, there's, there's probably not, not a, a better example than on the um, attorney bio pages. Could be an attorney, could be a shareholder, could be a director of something, a paralegal, a uh, CEO or a board member. They're just people in general. And uh, they wanted a letter-by-letter -letter navigation for last names, so we gave it to them. And there's nobody with the last name Y. I was heading for V anyhow. And uh, I am not, I am not an attorney, nor do I play one on TV. But uh, I'm not an attorney spokesperson either. But um, look at that. And I'm not, and I'm not, uh, I'm not 19 anymore either. Uh, that's 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 my high school picture, from my senior picture from 1990. I just want to think about that for a minute. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. So uh, Doug Van, the attorney here, and I didn't want to use a real one of the attorneys because I didn't want to spend all the time on that page and whatever. So I just, I just put my, my name on this. Um, here's the address. Uh, there are four offices that these attorneys could be in. And then over here, um, so from, from far right to left, let's go all right to left. These are Doug Van's resources. I can refer to myself in third person now for the rest of this presentation. Um, so these are the alerts that are somehow related to Doug Van. We couldn't do ownership. We couldn't do the because every every user is a every biography is a user. Um, I imported from another database and I just wrote into the user table and just you know, auto implemented it as it does naturally, and just created a user for every single person that existed on the old side. It was an MS SQL database. So these alerts are not owned by this user. These alerts are um, node referenced in. I could have used user reference, but you know, the user pro the content profile module gave me a node for every user, so I just did a node reference to the profile. And um, if I had other things, alerts, uh, podcasts, and events, they would also appear in here. Uh, education and, and, um, and admissions, I think, is a field in the node. Experience, I think, is a field in the content type of attorney uh, of biography here. And then the, all this data is also in just one of the fields. The office is a separate content type, of which there are only four nodes of it, and it just gets brought in by node reference. Vcard is some wicked trickery I might show you later on. And then these are other uh, practice area content type and industry content type that are also brought in by node reference. So when I edit this node, you're going to see a lot of interesting stuff. And we used contemplate module for this. And no, don't, don't stop the video and rewind it and play that again. I did say contemplate module. Um, there wasn't a lot of time to do theming the right way, if I can say it that way. And we had an, in, uh, an unexperienced uh, team of Drupal themers. Getting, you know, kind of taking their crack at it. They're a great job. The site's awesome. Usability and uh, interaction and design is it's a great site. But Contemplate module let us shave off a lot of time and learning a lot of stuff. And uh, they had used it, used it before. I believe they used it before. So the full name is actually um, an auto title that adds first name, middle initial, and last name together. So um, I think if, unless you're user one, you can't even see the title field. It just grabs these three values and concatenates them together with tokens. So that's, that's is that auto title module, I believe. Yeah. So that's kind of a tip and trick. Uh, page title for us. This this is a copy of the site from back in like November before it launched. So there's a lot of things that are kind of missing here. But uh, the meta the note words module gives me meta information, which is not really important. Um, here's the vocabularies. I have one vocabulary of law school. I, I forget why we made this choice. But every law school that's available in there, I know why we did this. Because it's very easy to have the client go in and add a law school. Um, if Indiana University is not in there, which it's not, I'm from Indiana. Um, so if they, if they hire somebody from Indiana University, they go to their taxonomy page and easily add a term of Indiana University. The alternative to this would be a CCK select box. They have to edit the CCK, edit the field um, of college, of, of law school, and then go into the allowed values field and add. And it's, a big, you know, it's going to be a big, ugly mess. They got to get in there and alphabetically put Indiana University at that point, right? So usability is really good when we use taxonomy as opposed to um, that. And there may be another solution that would have worked. There's there's always five ways to do things, or 500 ways to do one thing in Drupal. Some of them heinously wrong, some of them cutting corners, and then we can all argue over the best one after that. 
Um, this is a uh, drop down select, I believe. Uh, whether they are a shareholder, a president uh, of council, a par paralegal, chief of something, member, board member, that's important. Um, top topics is a taxonomy term. If there's topics that are going on that, are, that they relate to, uh, these three fields can concatenate together on the title, email, phone, headshot. There's that handsome guy from 1990 again. Um, the biography and content uh, section is what we see on the front page of uh, when we're looking at the node. Uh, the cases was one of the sections we saw information on. Um, education and admissions was one of the tabs we saw. That's just a Z-index. All the content is right here in the middle. We just Z-index stack them. When you click on this, we pop it in front. Little CSS trick, right? We could have used quick tabs. I did not know about quick tabs last year. I know about it now. So we could have done quick tabs. It'll do an Ajax call and bring in the information, or it'll just let it sit there and do Z-indexing on your CSS, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then uh, publications, Doug Bain has no publications, so that, that was not there. Um, the industries that he relates to, the, here's a node reference field, so these are all industry nodes. When they create the FUBAR energy on down the road, then the FUBAR option becomes an option when they want to go tag an attorney. You know, Doug Van dabbles in the FUBAR legal field, so they can come in here and, and do a command click to add that to my list of industries. Same thing for the practice areas, uh, same thing for the offices, and... Um, and so on and so forth. So there are, there are things you don't see. Remember the resources tab? It had like alerts, and it would have had podcasts and events and news articles. How's that get brought in? There's some magic on that. Yeah. They do have more information, they have descriptions, sometimes associated images. And on the view field, I'm glad you brought that up, because uh, the question was, there's more information behind those titles than just titles, otherwise I could have used taxonomy. They're nodes. So, I mean, nodes versus taxonomy terms. But on the content type, content type of bio, or is it B for bio, biographies, um, shift, uh, command click. Okay. I have so many tabs open. So, um, oh, I'm creating one? That's not what I wanted. Content types. Biography. Oh, I, was, I was in the right place, I'm sorry. Um, on the uh, display, on the, uh, here's, the, here's all the fields. And then on the display field, when I display the node references, it is um, of like um, the industries. It is title. Here are my options, okay? So, Doug Van practices law in energy and probate and something. Energy and probate. When you show the industries that he's linked to, show right now it says show the title as link to the node. Or show the title as no link. Here's the information. In which case, taxonomy would be better. I mean, if it's just sitting there as a, as a, as a little phrase or a, you know, use taxonomy. Um, or, or just put the, whole, put the whole node in there. That's going to be a, pretty, a really big page. Some of these guys practice 7, 10, 12 different practice areas, and then you know, 10 industries. So we're just going to have this gargantuan page. Um, give me the teaser of the body. Do nothing with it. Okay? Great question, man. And shoot these questions out, because it sends me places I probably wasn't going to go. So display fields, if you don't know this, is, is an incredibly powerful, essential tool that you've got to harness. I, was, I mastered CCK to uh, some degree, Never opening that tab, and then I had a, I had a, some, somebody else had developed something. And I was trying to deconstruct it, and I'm like, "Where is this?" And I called my buddy Josh Brower. I said, "Dude, I can't find the control for this," and it was a node reference display. Um, you know, it's, it's showing the whole node. I just I don't want the whole node. I want I just want the title. And we we we, we figured it out actually about an hour. It took us forever because we didn't think to go look in the display section. So can't believe it took uh, Josh Brower an hour to fix that <laughs> to figure it out. But uh, anyhow, so it displays. But I was on something else. So on the resources was my point. When we're on the resources of Doug Man, go back to the view. <clears throat> there is all this content, which could be alerts and podcasts and articles and everything else. Where's that coming from? Right down here. I'm um, going to do it on managed fields. So these are all the fields of my biography. In the same order you saw them in the edit form. But look at that, uh, the V-card view field, and then a view field for resources, alerts, 
newsletters, events, articles, and podcasts. View field module. The view field module takes data, takes, takes a view, it's just a regular view. You've made a view, your options are having it display on a page, give it a path. Your option for that view is to make it a block. Give it a name, go to your blocks UI, say, take that block out of disabled, put it on the first sidebar, or put it in the second sidebar, or put it in the footer, or put it in the header, or content top, or content bottom. Put it somewhere where somebody's going to see it. Um, and that, that, that's your view display block. But what a view field does is it says, hey, I want, well, for instance, this podcast. Oh, see, what do I have? I, have, I had alerts, didn't I, on Doug Van? Was that an alert I had? Um, so to show you on the alert, so the label's alert. I didn't have, uh, and I did have the label rendering, I believe. And, and um, force the default. So when I was editing the, the, the bio node for Doug Van, you didn't see any options for alerts, podcasts, and all that stuff. You didn't see that. So I'm forcing the default. And... Um, and the, and and then the, even user one can't edit that from that from the node edit. It's not it's a non it's not it's an invisible thus non editable field. Um, and then instead of giving I could I could give the user options. You can choose views from any of these views, displays from any of those views. And if you don't remember, a view has a default, and it has no view set to it yet until you assign a display of a block or a page or a feed or, or an attachment. Or um, or an abuse attach or, or a sundry of other things you can attach to it. In my case, Leo Alerts is the name of the view, and the display is called Bio Alert, and I'm passing the node ID. So I'm on the Doug Van page, which I think is node 238. So the value 238 gets handed off to this view. Let's go look at the view. So an entire view is being shoved into that area, that that field of my content type. Let's go look at it. And this is complicated. This really is. You, uh, some of you have got it from the first time I've said it, and, and I don't have to show you. Some of you need to see it. Some of you need to see it again, and that's fine. This is really complicated stuff, I promise you. And uh, I think I do a pretty decent job of it. I've given this session coast to coast this year, and uh, so far I've had everybody say, I think I got it. So the name of that view was, um, was down here. And so, so the name of the view is Leo Alerts, and the name of the display is Bio Alerts. So, so here's Leo Alerts. I'm going to edit this view, and there's a there's a display called Bio Alert. And what's interesting is, if I was on this right here and I moused over it, I can go straight to it, and hit the Edit key and not go hunting around for it. Then why did he go hunting around for it? Because he forgot the edit button was there. And I'll apologize again for my voice, all this talking. Um, so here it is. Um, and there's an argument set up in here. What's an argument? Well, as you saw in that view field, I had to pass, I, I, I had the opportunity to pass, and, and really I had to, when you're on the Doug Van bio page, or the, or the Billy Bob, or the Peggy Sue, whosoever page you're on, that page is a node. There's a node. The URL is, you know, profile slash, you know, really cool Doug Van guy, or whatever. That's the URL. But Drupal knows, and that's just the alias, that's just the alias. That's node 238, and that's all it is. I, I know what that is. So when I pass that percent NID, that little helper text that you could barely see, that I, that I zoomed past, said you can use this, you know, percent NID, and it'll pass the node of this page into the view. So the argument says, and arguments, if you don't know, are, are simply filters, okay? Because I've got the filter of node type alert, node type, uh, nodes that are published. If it's not published, I don't want to show the link to it because they're going to get a, they're going to get a page not found or whatever they're going to get, and that's just not cool. And then that's an irrelevant field. Um, I took that out. One of the other developers did it. Um, we use a scheduler module. So this said, um, if, if today, cause so the scheduler module you know, I'm going I'm to publish this blog post, but it's not going to—it's not going to actually be published. No, I'm going I'm to submit submit it, but it's going to be published tomorrow at noon. Um, so this this checks to see if it's past that date. Well, hello. If this is published, yes, then you you are past that date. So this is redundant. And, I, and someday I want to take it out for these demos because I keep explaining that. And there's one more argument: content attorney. It grabs the note ID from my view field which is 238 for Doug Van, and stuffs it in there, so I get 
alert ty alert content types that are published that are past their published date where the attorney node ID where the attorney reference node ID is 238 yes yes because because on that industry um, I gotta look at this more carefully I want to say it absolutely right if I say it twice and say it two different ways so this is by, this is um, configuration of the content type attorney reference in the field attorney reference so what I'm gathering here I gotta remember remember this is um, is um, over on the Doug Van page This was this was alert. Forgive me. There are so many convoluted relationships going on here. This is Leo Alerts, where the um, I don't need that page anymore. So this is this is the bio alerts for on the Leo Alerts page, showing the alerts that belong to Doug Van. Yes. Okay. So so the alerts themselves. There we go. On the alert content type, um, on that specific node, there's a you know which attorneys does this alert relate to. And Doug Van is one of the many that are that are flagged in that node reference on the alert, pointing to me. So this this argument says, hey, go out there to all these published alerts, and if any of them have a value on their attorney reference that equals the same as the node I'm on, then that means okay, I'm on Doug Van, and I'm going to go through all these alerts, and I, and I only found three. I've got a lot of alerts, but I only found three that have a node reference field that points to node 238, which it also knows is Doug Van. Okay, so I had to get that right. Um, so my view field, so, but, but, I want to, but I'm in my attorney node, and I want to know. I, I don't want to point it back. Okay, so you, you, you produce a new alert today. It's about healthcare legislation, right? And so you, and then, um, and you want to reference Doug Van. Do you also want to then go submit that node and then go back to Doug Van and then have a, a, an alert reference to go point to that new alert node? Do you want to double your efforts? You don't. So I have a, a view field in the Dubman node, uh, content type, a view field that reaches out to this view, plugs in the NID, and I'm just saying it like the fifth or sixth time, plugs in the node ID of, of Dubman, and it pulls up the three alerts, and if I make a new one, the fourth one, that has a reference to me. Okay. So in the case of the office, I'm showing you the office that, that Dubman is pointing to. I'm pointing to this office. Okay. On the alerts, I'm showing you the alerts the point to me. And the reason the way I do that um, is by having a, a view stuffed into my to my node. That's very powerful. That's very two way, that's very bidirectional. Does anybody think they kinda got that or they totally got that? Who are my totally got it? Oh Lordy Lordy. Okay. So um, I'll, I'll I'll brush brush it a little bit a little bit again. Um, on my on Doug Van, <clears throat> there are um, four office nodes, for two in Minneapolis, one in DC, and I forget the other one. And Doug is pointing to the one in in uh, Saint Cloud. Okay, so and that's one of the fields you saw. When I edit this, I can change the office right here, right now, uh, and I'll do it. No, I won't. It takes too much time. So I can change the office from the context of editing Doug Van's profile. If I want to change the alerts, okay, um, you know, he, Doug had nothing to do with this alert. I don't know how that got in there. That's a mistake. Um, where do I want to go to, to take the relationship away to that alert? Do I edit Doug Van's profile? No. Doug Van, the, the node 238 or whatever I am. What am I? I'm uh, 184. Wow. My nodes one by mousing over the edit, I see it's node slash one eighty four slash edit. So I'm I'm one eighty four. Um, node one eighty four knows nothing, nothing about alerts. Node one eighty four does have a con uh, have a field that's a view called a view field, and that view is a view of alerts that are pointing to Doug Van. So that, I'm I'm clocking in about eight or nine times of saying that, but it's important to get it. Um, so I'm going to go edit this energy node. Oh, I've, got to, I've got to open it up first. And uh, this, this is the one that uh, mistakenly was assigned to Doug Van. We're going to take it out. We're going to take it out. So it's not like that this 
right, somebody at some point decided that this no relates to you. <laughs> Me and you and the gentleman here are going to collaborate on this new uh, health care legislation alert that we're going to publish, and we're working on it together, and uh, unless he's a glory hound and just takes all the credit, you, you kind of look like a glory hound to me, I'm sorry, it's just, it's the hair. Um, then he's going, to, he's going to include all three of our names down here, attorney reference, okay? But then he's like, you know, that Doug guy, he did nothing. He just sits around taking glory all the time. Yeah, so we have a little, little office drama going on here. And then I'm going to save this. And uh, this was the Energy Alert Treasury Department release, right? And then I have another note over here somewhere. Oh, i got to find another one. I need to keep like the URL of that. It's note 184. I need some more tabs. That's what blows projectors, is having too many tabs open. Was it one of the three? Oh, thank you. So it'd been quicker to do it the right way, right? Oh, that's right, okay. So um, I took off that one, and it's gone. Let me make sure. Which one was it? Energy Alert Treasury Department Releases Procedures. Releases procedures. Did I save it yet? Treasury Department releases. Um, so edit. I did, didn't I? I took, I took it out. Yeah, because it's, it's not in there now. Um, in fact, CUV. In fact, my name's gone completely. And I got too many, uh, too many pages open. You think? Um, refresh. I saw that refresh on this on this page. Every uh, every session, folks. Procedure for. Why is that still in there? It wouldn't be a session, folks. A Drupal session if it wasn't having some wonky little uh, cruft going on. So now I'm editing, editing the note again here in this live environment. And uh, attorney ref. Jonathan. And how come my name doesn't even appear as an option in here anymore? Is it my first? Oh, thank you. And I'm still not in there. I'm still not in there. I know, but I'm, it's not selected, though. If, yeah, um, I have to go through a different browser if I had to. You mean, I can't believe So click the cache on the uh, Drupal. Flush all caches. So technically, it should not be there. I love it, man. It's always a unique situation I run into on every person. This, this one has not happened before. Clearing cache on localhost is a uh, resource, resource hog. But you see the point? When I mean, my cache clears, I think we'll prove it. Clash, cache cleared um, back to my... Now where am I? One of these? None of these. It's open to tab. <laughs> Now, if it's still in there now, I'll be so bummed. Yay. Good Lord. Okay. So, and so the point there, folks, is, you know, clear your cash frequently. <laughs> clear early and clear often. So, so I change the office assignment where? In the profile node. I change the alerts where? On the alerts. So even if, you, even if you've used node reference, you haven't probably used view field to plug views in. And remember, arguments are simply additional filters. People who've had this, I had a, I had a struggle with uh, arguments back in the days of early learning my Drupal. And um, I swear to goodness, no one said, Doug, they're just, they're just kind of fancy dynamic arguments. I really don't remember anybody saying that. I figured it out on my own, and I'm very happy I did. Um, now I want to show you, I'll just open up a new tab. Um, so they're running short on time. The Northwest University Women's Board. 
This is their color scheme and design. I just put it on there. I, I launched this about a few weeks ago. Um, we have this wicked thing over here on um, programs. Some crazy views. Um, this register button, okay? They have events. This is an alumni organization. They have a lot of events. And sometimes uh, the, the notion of registering for the event is, is a, valid, a valid thing. Mm -hmm. And when you're displaying it, you're using a view that displays that displays both the bio information as well as the No. That's a good question. That's a great question. When you're looking at the Doug Van page, that's the node view. It's node 184. Because anytime you create a piece of content, one of the ways you could look at it is just its node page. And Drupal will render the node, the information on top, all the way to the bottom. And if you can't really wrap it, you can't do anything tricky with it. Um, if you want to change, the, yeah, you can change the order, you know. But we're using contemplate module to to uh, intercept and say, okay, here are all my all, all the values of the fields. I'm going to put these three in the same div, and I'm going to float that left, and I'm going to have all this come up over here. So the contemplate module lets me lay it out nicely. Yes. Contemplate takes advantage of the variables afforded to it. And one of those variables is um, alerts, which happens to be a view field. So the value, like the, like the value of, of uh, events, was empty. It was printed, but there was nothing in it because Doug Main has no events. Same with podcasts and articles. But under alerts, when it goes to render the, the variable of alerts in the contemplative interface, it grabs the alert field. What is the alert field? The alert field is a view field. What's the view field of? Bio alert, uh, Leo alerts, bio alert, or, or bio alerts, Leo alerts. It grabbed those values in. How did it grab them in? It handed off the node ID as an argument to the filter of alerts published date after the scheduler. So, so contemplate is um, basically access to the just basically lets you lay out your view. You should theme it. You should create a, a theme, a template page for that content type. But I didn't have time. I was developing a very complicated, complicated site. Okay, someone want to agree with me? I haven't shown you all of that slide. I've only shown you one cool part. So I was just up to my eyeballs and all that crazy relationship stuff, and I cut my themers loose with con Contemplate. And um, they got their job done much quicker using the GUI. <clears throat> they're awesome, awesome themers, and they're even better now. They don't use Contemplate anymore. But that was a cheat. So I don't want to throw you off the trail too much with the Contemplate. But that was a node page. This is not a node page. This is a view of two events. And I'll show you the view. Today, we're talking about <clears throat> Views Custom Field. Who, who, who has used Views Custom Field? Uh -huh. Even you, Tom? You, oh, this is fine. Do you, you have any idea what it is? Oh, you're going to love this. Tom, uh, Tom, when I go way back, he helped me on my very first Drupal project. And I learned a lot from him and the other team. There, I was, they were doing a project for me that I was managing. And I just kind of watched him do it, and I learned a lot. So... So here are all the fields that you just saw in that view. It was, just, it was two um, programs, two, they call them programs, they're events. Um, there's a title for the event, there's when it happens, there's the body description of it. Can you see everything okay? There's a description of when it happens. Um, um, is parking, I mean, if someone registers to this event, do we need to offer them a chance to prepay for their parking? Or is it some public place where there's, you know, we don't have, we, we can't collect money for parking. So is there parking an option? Um, and um, what does it cost for the for the program? Is there a cost associated with the program? Is there a separate cost associated to the um, reception that follows the program? We're bringing in some famous woman author to speak before the Northwestern University Women's Board, and it's going to cost seven bucks for parking, forty bucks for the program, and twenty bucks for the reception, maybe. Um, uh, custom field PHP code. I'll get back to that. Um, content program. Um, don't remember, and content registration. Um, so let me take a, let me take a look at the um, registration. Is registration on or off for this event? Not based on the timing of it all, but do we just want people to show up willy-nilly, or do we want to keep a track of this and have them register? Now, it, when, I, when I have my view of all the, of the upcoming events, some have the register button, some don't have the register button. 
I need to look at the value of this registration, yes or no. If it has registration, I want to provide a link, a button to register. And in that link, I want to provide a query string of very important values. Is parking an option? If so, what's it cost? Is there a cost to registration? How much? Is there a cost to the, pro the program? How much? Is there a cost for the reception? How much? So on the, on the top level, do I render the button, yes or no? Okay, if I do render the button, how much information do I have to pass in my query string to create a link for that button? And where is that information going to go? In 11 minutes. So my custom PHP field allows me, it does three things. I'm using it for custom field PHP. There's also, and, there's, and the same module also offers you custom field HTML. I can just throw a bunch of HTML in this area. And I can position it in between whatever fields I like. Okay, Just HTML. And there's another one. Uh, there's a third option. I forget what it would be. What HTML and PHP, what else is there in the world? I don't know. Huh? Is it CSS? It shouldn't be. No. That's semantic views. I'm not talking about that. It's an awesome module. Um, so uh, there's a third option. I love it. I don't know what it is. So uh, there's no label for this because we don't need labels or everything. Users know what things are, typically. And here's my PHP. And it says, who, who are my PHP programmers in the house? Okay? You can stuff just a minute, just little, little ifs. If this, then this. Little conditionals. If you can just master the conditional and follow the little examples down here. Uh, the text that should be displayed include, include the opening PHP and the closing PHP, okay? Um, delimiters when using PHP code. Available variables. Now these two variables, okay, the data. The data object is all the records, okay? So this view is kicking in. Okay, I'm getting ready to build this page. The view says, um, what, where are my programs, my events, that are coming up in the future? Okay, I've got two. What's the first one? The first one is some author signing a book, okay? This data object, this data variable, gets filled with all the results, all those fields I had, program, title, uh, parking, parking fee, program fee, uh, reception fee. All that information is in my data object. And I can, do, I can do an if. If the data object, no data field park fee, um, reg open. I don't know why the park fees in there. It added some serious and interesting long names to these variable names, and I don't know why. The most important thing here is this. Reg, reg, reg open. If the registration open, that's my shorthand. If registration open equals yes, if that is true, then everything inside these two curly brackets gets executed. Okay? And what is that? So if registration is not open, it doesn't render this button. Simple enough. So my first, my high level goal is achieved. I'm not going to print, I'm not going to go through all this muck if my registration open equals, does, uh, does not equal yes. Okay? Could be false, could be no, could be nah, but it's, it's certainly not yes. So I'm just not, not going to execute this and if it equals yes. Um, but if it does, I'm going to build this wampum query stream. Then print, and I'm using single quotes, so I can use double quotes inside my, my value here. Print uh, an anchor tag with a class of this, with a destination of content register event. Now a content slash register dash event is a web form. Who, who are my web form users? Web form module? Oh, it's awesome. Don't use the contact form out of Drupal core. Use web form. You're still getting emails from people submitting forms but it stores the data in your database, and you can parse it later and export to a spreadsheet. It doesn't create nodes out of their submissions, but it does keep them in the database, and that's convenient for a variety of reasons. Mail server goes down or some mail issue, it's all in your database. So, so I'm going to a, a, um, a web form, and it has all these values in the web form, and I'm sending in a query string that says um, parking equals uh, parking value. Um, and part, that's a yes or no. Is parking a valid option for this for this uh, for this event? If so, then give the person um, the option to say how many parking passes they need. And when you do that, here's the parking fee value. So so pass the parking fee value from that from that program from that event. Pass the program the parking fee value into it. And um, here's the here's the program fee P R O G program fee. Here's the reception fee. And then. Um, I'm also passing in the title of the event and the date of the event. That's kind of ugly looking, and, and you know, forgive me. Let me open up a tab. <clears throat> oh, it's not localhost. 
This one's on the live internet. You think it's complicated, try explaining it. So, when I go into the programs, <clears throat> why is that button there? Regprog, uh, regop, regop equals yes. Therefore, that little slice of code is being, I'm rendering that field right out of the data object. And what's the URL? The URL is uh, content slash register dash event. I didn't have a line to yet. And now here's all this query string. Parking equals no. Are we going to charge people for parking? So parking fee equals five. That's, that's useless. There is no parking. So that when, they, when they create this event, they just left a five in there. Maybe, maybe their browser automatically filled out the form because it was five the last time, and they didn't bother changing it. I don't know. Uh, the program fee is $20. I'm just looking at the URL. And then the um, reception is $10. And then it, this, is a, this is a lecture. And it's a lecture from Kimberly Gray on the ninth month, 21st day of the year of our Lord, 2010. Now you drop down here to the web form. All that data up there, but there's only a couple fields. Where's the title and the date? They're hidden. You can't see them. They're pre-populated with the values in the URL. And I'm not using pre-populate module. Pre-populate module would allow you to pre-populate the title or body or any other field of a node, of a node add form. Um, if, you know, link to node slash add slash story, question mark, um, little brackety goodness, uh, title equals this title and body equals this body. And it would pass those values, the pre-public module would pass those values into the form once you give that person the opportunity, that user the opportunity to create that node. This is not what I'm doing here. I'm passing in these values through the query string, um, which is uh, post, post variables, post values, right? Sometimes I, sometimes I get up on stage, I'm like, I say get. Okay, let me sure I got that right. Huh? Exactly, like I said, I would say get, but sometimes I screw up and say post. <laughs> So this guy wants a free lunch, the control freak from earlier, thank you. He's going to go up here and make this, um, make it um, $2, All right? Is that too rich for you? You can't afford that, can you? Uh, he's going to hit enter. He's now paying $2, okay? It's the Northwestern University Women's Board. Would you really do that to him? <laughs> so there are other solutions, but um, I wanted to do a PayPal. I don't know PayPal. I want to do that too. I wanted to do Ubercart. And how many of you are thinking, why isn't he just doing Ubercart? They, they didn't want it. Oh, we don't want these nice ladies. We don't want to have to train them on how to use Ubercart and, and make each event a product with attributes. No, 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 no. Let's, let's do something easier. Well, this was harder to build, that PHP custom field, and then all these query strings. And I got jQuery out the wazoo, not, you know, not showing things. And um, so now you want... Um, you want uh, two of these, oh, it still says 20 bucks. I don't know why. Space? Did I? All right. Well, I'll live. So two, two of the programs are 20 bucks, and three of the receptions, because I'm going to eat twice as much as somebody, one of, my, one of my guests. So that's 70 bucks. So I've got JavaScript here. This little CSS was nice, because it looked like a field, and they complained. It looks like a field. I'm like, well, it's not a field, it's a total. And you can't click on it and change anything. You can't change the total. So like, but it looks like a field. And um, so I went in and it was quite simple. Border none and text large and text red. And um, sure enough, it doesn't look like a field anymore. I thought, I thought it was going to be really hard. I really did. Oh, crap, how am I going to do that? Because I'm not a CSS guy. I'm, I'm a coder. But doggone it, I themed that field right there. I was happy with it, so um, I've got two minutes, and I'm, and I'm going to show you a little bit of this web form because there's some magic in the web form um, on the components, uh, form components of the web form, and this is being videoed, right? Didn't I, didn't I video the yeah, yeah, I videoed it. Okay, so just play it over and over again, and take out the parts where I said post instead of get, and um, whatever, whatever else you need to take out. So here are my form values. The program name takes the get variable prog name. 
So the program name gets stuffed into that value, right? And that's, that's, that's hidden from view anyhow, it's hidden. The parking fee takes the park fee value that I plugged into my, my query string, right? Same thing with the program fee and the reception fee. And then um, the total has, uh, has some jQuery running on it that keeps on you know, uh, updating the values and doing the calculations. So the, uh, num the number of passes times parking fee plus number of attending the program times pro program fee plus the number of attending the reception times reception fee, sum it up, put it in the total. Okay? So you got jQuery, you got web form, you got crazy query strings, you got PHP custom uh, field, and all that so these people can register to go see, listen to somebody talk about our books. Do they, do any of those people appreciate how hard this was? No? Is it pretty doggone cool? I think so. So, one minute for questions. And again, the goal, just watch this video 50 times. Or, or and hit me up at dougvan.com and, and say, hey man, you know, it's worth 50 bucks, man. Go over that thing with me again. You know? um, questions? Boy, boy, I gotta ever open up a tab. Um, um, what, what's the name of the site? University of Women's? What's the name of the site? I gotta just go back over here. Um, when you look at the programs and you register for the form, this stinks, okay? So it's um, this value, that value, and that value. And uh, one and one and submit. This is what they wanted. They wouldn't let me do Uber card. They wouldn't let me confirm payment. You will be redirected to a secure PayPal page. Please click here to continue. I don't want to click here and continue. I've already sent my form submission in. See ya. I will continue. And now here I am at the very simple PayPal page with the value already pre populated into the, their field. And then I put in all my good information and then I submit it. And then when I close this tab, my previous tab that opened up the new tab is still there waiting for me. Not best practices, but it's what the client wanted and the client's always right. And their budget's often fixed. Fixed value. So the answer to your question is it creates a, a new submission every time they do that. Um, they open up a tab. Um, to show you very quickly the web form submissions, uh, i got to log in. We're going a little over here, folks, and I hope you don't mind. Log in to dougvan.com. You can't do that. And go to web form. By the way, I'm giving away uh, two hours of free Drupal training. And to pick your topic, uh, go to dougvan.com and the contact me button and uh, submit a contact form. And just say, hey, man, you know, you're kind of ugly and you're not very funny, but I learned a couple things. And I'd love to have two hours of free uh, consult. These are all my submissions from this week, or from a long period of time. And um, there was one right there, somebody submitted something. And I have about eight from ten or eight or ten from yesterday. So these are all my web form submissions. And this is what the Northwest University Women's Board is gonna look at, all their submissions. Then they're getting emailed as well. I saw another question in there. What, yeah? You had a, probably in one of your recent tabs, you had, a, um, um, you, had, you had an edit form that had a bunch of fields in it. The web form. Is that web form that had the, the sent get? Uh-huh. Yeah. It looks like CCK, but it has nothing to do with CCK. It has its own UI and its own uh, API, and you can't add fields from other CCK modules. It's its own thing, and it's done. There are occasional modules that extend it, but really it's not a thriving economy like an uh, ecosystem like CCK. Another hand, hand, hand over there. Any more questions? In the back. How would I have done this the right way? I've had more budget and more time on it. I'd have gone Ubercart. It's really simple. Don't kick them off the site on a new tab. That's usability fail. Um, just create a new product. Whenever you create an event, it creates a product at the same time. And just, you know, yeah, go for it. But that does require that the user, the client, the end user, has the wherewithal to create these. And it's not that complicated. And I tried to explain that. But I had a, I had a wonderful time building this monstrosity. This was far more complicated than building an Uber card set up. Okay? Uh, this is Doug Van. Check me out at DougVan.com. You've been awesome. Watch this video 50 times a day. 
you're going to get it. And I'll answer more questions offline. And I'll turn off my recording here. Thank you.